Now, it was primarily used as a studio instrument, but you were one of the first musicians to take it on the road. I was the first musician. You were the, the, the first yeah. musician. Yeah. But then the fragility yeah. of that, that must have been a big challenge, because you were saying here, you can go out of alignment. How on earth do you deal with that? Uh, but the, the alignment was basically OK um, if it was done right in the beginning. And so the, uh, there wasn't really a big problem with alignment because of it being you know, on the back of the, uh, the gate wagon you know, and, and driving around all over the place. There, there wasn't any of those kind of problems. The kind of problems I was having was that you know, usually if it, we could do a show maybe at 7 o'clock in the evening or 8 o'clock, and uh, the, the motors in this one are DC motors. They run on probably 24 volt DC. But the originals, the, the 300, uh, not the 300, what's it called, the Mark II, um, had these AC power supplies that um, if the power dropped on the grid, so did this. So you, I'd be playing and somebody would, you know, 100 people down the road, their moms just put the chicken in the electric oven. And, 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 and so I'd be playing you know, and they would go, Why can't you just get cornflakes? <laughs> so, so that was a problem. So, so I, I, uh, I had a friend who, who was somewhat of an engineer and everything, and I talked to him about that. He said, you know, they've got this new angled stuff coming out. He said, they're DC motors. that are running 24 volts DC. I said, well, that sounds great. So we got some, and we updated my machine, and so I didn't have that problem again. Because the power was never drawn away from it. Before giving us a demonstration of what you were doing with the Moody Blues, tell us what the Beatles were doing, what John Lennon in particular was doing with the Mount Trial. Um, yeah, because I started going, you know. And... And John was doing. <laughs> and when I heard that, it was like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the story is, of course, is that we we were the we were the opening band for the Beatles on the very last tour of England. And when we finished that tour, they got on the plane the next day and went to Shea Stadium. And that was it. Right. Um, I'll never get over that. Yeah. Now the, the model was. Yes. Now, the, uh, uh, they continued not just through Sgt. Pepper, of course, but also on the White Album. And a lot of people hear that flamenco guitar solo at the beginning of Bung the continuing mm -hmm. story of Bungalow Bell, right. given its full title. And wonder was George playing for Mango guitar? Was that Paul? Tell the answer. Um, well, it would have been the Mellotron. Right? Right. I don't know who pressed the button. The button. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not the Beatles playing it, it was on the Mellotron. Yes. That's right. I think that's true. Now, when you started recording with the Mellotron from Moody Blues, were there difficulties associated with recording because it was such an unusual instrument? Uh, did the engineers know how to mic it and did they know how to well, capture it? Actually, we did two things. We took a direct out, which was straight out of the uh, pre-amplifier, uh, and that would go to the uh, control room. But also, I had my speaker set and amplifiers there, and they put microphones on there because I could get more tones and, and out of it from, from what the recordings were. Um, yeah, that, it was really a, a bit of both. Right. And was the Mellotron something that you found easy to compose on as well? Because uh, you had that side. Was it, was it something you found that was helpful to you in, in composition? Uh, oh, only in two, only maybe in, in, because of the flute thing. <laughs>